Time for a jumping off point. <laughs> I have been working on freshening my living room with just things that I already have and carefully following the rules of thumb for living rooms, decorators rules of thumb from my favorite interior design blogger, Laurel Byrne. But if you haven't seen my other two videos about my living room, I'll link those at the bottom. You can go back and watch those. I've gotten through arranging the furniture and space planning and now it's time for the jumping off point as Laurel says. So my jumping off point in here is my 96 inch long couch and everything else in here that's a given to the rug and the chairs and everything but we'll just say that's the jumping off point because that's the non-negotiable i love my couch it is a true vintage couch from the 60s it was my grandparents couch and i have the original pay slip from where my grandpa bought it at the furniture store and laurel says that you know the your furniture should all be within a few inches like the chairs and the, everything you're sitting on should you know, should be basically the same height. Now, unfortunately, that's my jumping off sort of problem is that the couch is like a mid-century modern. It's got a sleeker line because it's from the 60s and it's lower. And my chairs that I have in here are all wingback chairs that kind of and I have a wingback settee as well that all harken back to an earlier time in furniture production and they're all higher so let's see how much higher right now there's nothing I can do about it but I just want to see from the tallest point back here down to the ground 43 and a half inches so that's a difference of about 13 inches or so Rita Koenig says that true luxury is really having things very comfortable and and workable and she gives a definition of like you know you're sitting in a chair and then you have a table right there for your drink and you have a light right there so you can see end tables, side tables, occasional tables, coffee tables. How high should they be? Where should they be in your room? And also lamps. How high should lamps be? How many should you have? Where should they be in the room? And I'm going to be following Laurel Burns rules of thumb for lamps and tables. Come on with me and let's assess my room based on these rules. The coffee table in here works as the place you can put your drinks for the people sitting on the couch and sitting in these two chairs right across in this main talking circle that I've got here. Now, Laurel says that your, co your tables, your coffee table should be just a few inches up or down from your uh, chairs and this is, I when I measured it was within an inch, maybe just an inch taller than my sofa. And it's about even with the chairs, so that works. And then, of course, I've got about a foot in between the coffee table and the sofa and about two feet in between the chairs and the sofa, which is about as far as you want it to be. So you kind of have to kind of lean forward if you're sitting in the chairs to put your drinks there, but it still works. Another rule of thumb from Laurel is that it definitely the table shouldn't be longer than your sofa and preferably it should be about half or two thirds of the length. I think the other thing that she says in that, let's move on, getting into end tables is that your end tables and your coffee table should not have the same finish. So you could do like mine are wood finish, end tables and a painted coffee table or painted end tables and a wooden stained coffee table but no matchy matchy please so that makes sense to me let's get into end tables now from what i understand from laurel that you should have end tables on either side of your couch now i don't because my couch is too long and if i put end tables it would mess up the flow of the room but i do have end tables on either side of my other couch which is this little two-seater up against the wall and they're not strictly speaking end tables but you can really use anything for an end table as long as it makes sense this is a, a, a sewing table, a reproduction cherry sewing table that we got as a gift. And on the other side, I've got a reading table that my husband's great grandfather made and they don't match exactly. And I might actually be inheriting another little sewing table soon and putting that on the other side. But I think they're both about the same 
level of formality. They're both kind of an early American feel and they're both stained wood. So that makes them cohere together in my opinion. Four inches from this arm to the top of this table. Like your table should be just a, just a couple of inches up or down from your sofa. Okay. So that's just at two inches above, so that's also a good uh, proportion. In this corner, the chair arm is mm, almost six inches below the tabletop, so it's a little too tall. This table's a little too tall for these chairs. I've got these little glass-topped nesting tables, and I think they are really the perfect height differential for this chair. It's just a couple of inches here and they look like they really belong there. So this chair might get its own drinks table. I'm not sure. I had these up against the wall and we certainly, they're very lightweight and we certainly drag them out sometimes, but I might keep them here next to this chair. I kind of like that look as well. Okay, then I read in her rules of thumb that if you have two chairs angled with the table between them, like angled for conversation, like I have here, that the table should really be a round table. So I dragged a round table down from upstairs that I have, and I'm gonna try to put it in there now. see her point about why you'd want it to be a round table. Well, I'll leave it like this for a while and see. I'm not completely sold on it, but I did want to try it. The table should be two to four inches above the chair arm. So let's see, on this side, it's just about at four, and on this side, it's just about at one and a half. Pretty much the proportions on this little corner are good. This chair is a little too high for the table, about a half an inch, but other than that, the proportions should be so they don't look too goofy now. This thing is lamps. This ceiling in here is about 11 foot tall and we do have an overhead chandelier that I don't really like to use that much because I really don't like overhead lights. So I try to have a lamp everywhere that I can have a lamp. And a lamp could be anywhere from 26 to 31 inches tall. This one's just about at 29. She said with a round table, it should be at least I think 22 inches if you want to put a lamp on it. This one is exactly 24 inches. The lamp height's just about 30, 31. So it's not a, too much of an oversized lamp. I do wish that, makes me wish that this table was, you know, more like what it's supposed to be, but that's okay. At least I know. And I guess this way, if I look at my room and I'm like, things just don't feel quite perfect, I know why. So in the future, if I'm looking for furniture, I will definitely keep these rules of thumb in mind. And then this might be the, the largest lamp I have in here. And it, let's see, it's looking like it's going to be a little tall. Well, it's just about 31, maybe 33 inches tall if you're counting the finial on the top here. So a little large, but not too bad. This lamp is just at 33 or 34, so it's really tall, but it's just about the same height as the lamp on the other side, so at least they don't look uneven, and they're both on the larger side, but they're the lamps I have, so here they stay. And it's just rules of thumb anyway, and they're not too far outside of what she recommends, although I do understand why she's recommending lamps more in the 26 to 31 inch range. And I actually think, yes, that would probably feel better on these tables. In the future, if I'm looking for things, that's something I'll definitely keep in mind. And when I wanna get everything just perfectly correct in my space and feeling really, really good, that's not where I am right now. Right now, I'm just making the most of what I have and that's great too. Some other rules of thumb for lamps. Laurel recommends no brain stems, please. So you can see the stem on this one is showing a little bit. And it's also showing on this one a little bit. And that's something that she recommends against. I think in her rules of thumb, the shade should cover the stem more like this one or more even. Now this shade's a little crazy and it needs a lot of repair. So disregard that part. I will be getting to that in a future video. 
but I think that when she says no brain stems, from what I've noticed, and if you start looking at interior designed rooms, you'll, I think, start noticing this too. You can't see the neck of the lamp at all. No brain stem, as she says. And I think that might be the ideal. I even think this lampshade's a little bit short because I don't enjoy seeing the harp and the socket. I actually don't think that those should be seen in the rules of thumb. So there is no stem to speak of on this lamp, but you can't see the socket and it doesn't look very nice. So I wish that the shade came down a little lower. And when I work on making new shade covers, I'm going to keep that in mind. So stay tuned for that in a future video. Now this lamp, you can see the stem, but it's quite decorative. So I think this shade is definitely the shade that belongs with this lamp. And I think that that stem is meant to be seen because it's decorative. So we're gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> and then this is a little lamp that I got at St. Vincent de Paul years ago, and it was a very inexpensive, cheapy little lamp. I painted it, I can't remember what color it was originally. And you can see a lot of the stem on this one, but it's painted, so I think it's not as bad as if you were seeing like a metallic, cheapy metallic that didn't look like it was supposed to be seen, kind of like over here where you can see the socket. And I don't think that you should, you should really should be seeing the sockets. And this shade probably came with this lamp too, but that doesn't mean that it's the right one, even if it came with. Don't get lamps with like cheapy metal chrome on them and I actually am a huge fan of painting lamps or finding inexpensive ones at thrift shops and painting them to look better. But I've done a lot of that over the years. This is the only one I have in here that's painted. I have one in the corner there. I've got one on either side of the settee. The couch is can be, I, I count the chandelier as lighting this main seating area. And then I've got a lamp over there in that little seating area as well. And then the floor lamp for the piano players. And also it gives off a nice ambient light in the evening. But I'm trying to make this room as comfortable as possible, which in Rita Koenig's view means as luxurious as possible. And I'm glad that I've got tables and lamps near every place that you can sit so you can comfortably put down a drink and comfortably turn on a light. I think that's a really important rule of thumb as long as the rules for height, which I pretty much follow in here and in the future I will be looking for pieces that fit the rules of thumb more perfectly as I strive towards an ever more perfect living room. Please let me know in the comments what you think about my end tables, occasional tables, coffee tables and lamps. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below. That helps it spread to more people and it helps my channel grow. Thanks again for watching. This is Kathleen from oldworldfarmhouse.com.